Okay, I just wanted to touch base, uh, give you guys a quick presentation about air leakage in buildings and uh, just talk about the metrics. So, uh, two years had an air tightness test done on their building. Okay, good. This, this, is, this is very hopeful. It's fantastic. Uh, it is something that's coming. Uh, as the 2017 building code comes around, uh, we're going to start to see air leakages being, if there isn't a mandatory requirement to air tightness test buildings, uh, it will certainly seem to be one of the lowest hanging fruits on the tree. So I just wanted to talk to you guys about the metrics of air leakage. It's a little bit of a nerd talk, and uh, we like building science. You know, it's, uh, it's in pedestrian magazines like this. You know, you, you uh, serious about air sealing. You can see the guy with his European uh, membranes. Uh, so, yeah, making sense of air, air leakage metrics. So, uh, I recently uh, read a book, uh, Paul Colanithi, uh, From Breath to Air, uh, a very touching book. But um, in the book, he uh, talks about the stethoscope as being an incredible diagnostic tool. In North America, instead of using the stethoscope, the doctor sends you off to a battery of tests. Whereas in a lot of third world countries where medicine is taught and they train their ear to be able to listen to the human body through the stethoscope, they can triage a person a lot more quickly and effectively. I feel the same way about the blower door. <laughs> okay. The, the, it's, a, it's a very powerful, non-destructive testing piece of equipment that in conjunction with experience and infrared uh, can reveal a lot of faults about buildings. It really is powerful at resolving issues in building envelopes. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. So, how do we test a building for performance? First, let us be it resolved that enclosures leak air everywhere. And if you've been on, uh, on an air, if you had an air tightness test on a building done, you know that nobody's perfect. You know, we're all, we all want the client to move in for Christmas. You know, you're rushing, you gotta move, you gotta get it done. I understand. You know, Shervin comes in and he's busting your chops. You forgot to cock this little, you know. It's not about that, okay? We're pre-drywall. So you find that all of a sudden, you know, we're leaking through the slab, you know, uh, around openings in the slab, around, you know, where, where the bathtub goes into, you know, penetrates the slab, where your sump pit uh, penetrates the slab, uh, the backflow preventer, if there is one. Uh, all of these penetrations, you know, they leak. So... It leaks everywhere, and if you're foolish enough to put uh, in, uh, ducts in an attic, then remember, the uh, skin of that ductwork is now part of the exterior thermal envelope, and it better be well air sealed. Uh, otherwise, ice, ice dams come around, you name it. Condensation, mold in the attic, destruction, the end of the world, you get the picture. <laughs> that's, that's, that's how you sell. <laughs> so, a blower door test basically looks like this. You put your testing apparatus on the building, usually in an opening uh, door, and you either depressurize the house or the building at various pr pressure points, or you pressurize. You could do a pressurization or depressurization. And here, you know, you can see using infrared, it helps you resolve issues around the building envelope. Here in Washington, Washington's one of the few states in the United States of America that now has a building requirement uh, building air tightness testing requirement. You can see here uh, the blower doors tested throughout. Now, there's different types of tests. We'll talk about them. This one here uh, is about the envelope only. It's only, it's purely about the envelope, and we could tell because all the intentional openings have been taped off. Some guy in a bosun chair had this beautiful job of getting out there and taping all of these, you know, probably vent exhausts and or intakes for HRVs. So you can see all the blower doors there distributed throughout the building probably using uh, the, uh, the uh, 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 elevator shaft as a, as a communication device for moving air around. This is in France. It's coming. It's coming, okay? So 10, ten fans, 4 ventilateurs, uh, 
uh, 39-story building in France. Uh, air tightness tested. Here you can see uh, four fans in the, in the bottom, two, and you know, distributed throughout the building. This is how you test large buildings. And you know, we do it all the time. Off-grid houses, uh, old houses, uh, houses on, you know, buildings on Front Street where a tenant wants to move in and wants assurances that there's not going to be any mold because of shoddy workmanship on the building envelope. Uh, Conservation Center in London, uh, Fanshawe Lake, uh, X2 on Jarvis, uh, you know, uh, ETS testing for each suite uh, for environmental tobacco smoke, cooking orders, you want to try and prevent that. Isolate each unit from one another for sound as well. Uh, this is a Humber, uh, uh, on, uh, building on Humber uh, campus. And uh, most recently, uh, in collaboration with uh, <coughs> Ryerson University, we tested the uh, brickworks. We'll talk about the resu results in a bit. So tests, what kind of tests or test me methods are there? There's lots of standard test methods out there. There's the classic, the classic CAN CGSB, which hasn't been uh, uh, updated since 86. <laughs> it's, it's a lovely document, uh, but it's, it's really archaic. Uh, it's, being, it's being updated now. Uh, but it is a standard test method, and a lot of ASTM uh, test methods have been based off of that. There's the ASTM standard tests. There's uh, Air Barrier Associ uh, Association of America. There's United States Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, there's European tests. They all have their local flavor. Okay, what do they all share in common? They all share the same math. Okay, all the doors have to be closed. All the windows have to be cammed shut. If you're running a furnace or an HVAC device or an HRV uh, and it's connected to the outside, you got to turn it off, right? Dampers have to be closed. Uh, sometimes they have to be sealed off, like we saw in that one picture. It depends on the type of test. It can't be too windy, especially if it's a tall building. Uh, if it's cold, it can't be too tall, especially not if you're testing the whole building. So the data, tech, the data collected also has to be of sufficient quality. If it's not good quality data, then you got to repeat your test. And then, of course, as Canadians, we love this, right? Converting from imperial to metric. And we, you'll see in this presentation, it's like, I just give up, right? Because one standard, like US Army Corps of Engineer says, if you're not entering your you know, degrees Fahrenheit and like feet square, forget it. You know, you're not part of the US Army Corps or whatever it is. So test procedures vary. The most commonly, uh, buildings uh, tend to be depressurized. And the data is collected at a range of pressures. Uh, say from 15 to 75 pascals in Europe, they go as high as 100 pascals. Okay, generally speaking, it's best to uh, test in lower ranges, even less than 75. It gives you a more realistic uh, curve, according to uh, uh, Colin at Retrotech. Uh, great website, uh, great equipment. Uh, um, some test methods require uh, pressurization, like Passive House. Passive House wants you to do an average of both the pressurization and depressurization in case you're using um, a fabric air barrier. Maybe you've got a fabric air barrier, and when we're sucking the fabric to uh, the building envelope, it gets nice and tight and it doesn't breathe. But when we billow it out, uh, now you get the increased surface area of all the seams in that loose fabric. So it makes a difference. And, but usually they're about the same, but different enough to make you always wonder, like, damn, did I miss something? Uh, anyhow, that's the way it is. Uh, some tests are one-point tests. If you want to do a quick and dirty, some tests are one-point tests. Some tests use existing HVAC equipment to depressurize or induce a, a, a pressure on, on the building. So just to put, put, put pressure in perspective here, Blaise Pascal, 150 and 75 Pascals. Well, we use 50 and 75 Pascals because they're quoted a lot in a lot of the standards, okay? So at 50 Pascals, it's equal to a water column of five millimeters. So I want you to picture Blaze sucking up water in that straw. He's got a five millimeter column of water in that straw, okay? If he's going to 75 pascals, it's 7.6 millimeters, okay? So 7.6 millimeters, that's equivalent to a 40 kilometer wind, or 50 pascals, 30 kilometer wind. So what you have to know about building pressures is that it's a function of area. The bigger the area, the more force is felt. And anyone who's sailed understands this concept very well. Watch the subscript. The subscript tells you a lot, and it changes all the time. It can drive you crazy. 
if you're not paying attention, they ask for a, an ACH50, but you give them an ACH, uh, uh, you know, 75. You can convert them. There are tables to convert them, but you have to be careful. So the subscript denotes uh, the building pressure. So if we compare CFM50 to CFM75, for example, so CFM, what does CFM stand for? Cubic feet per minute. So about, imagine a basketball. So cubic feet per minute, every minute, you know. And the this, this 75 means 75 pascals. This is typically used for large buildings. Okay, CFM uh, 75. 75 is large buildings. We don't, we, usually for houses, we go up to 50 pascals, 60 pascals, depending on what test you use. CFM 25, usually used for duct work. If we're testing duct work, we only go to 25 <laughs> pascals. ACH 50, who can tell me what an ACH 50 is? That's right. Okay, so who here remembers what their last ACH 50 was on their last build? Give me a range here. 0 0.95. 0 0.95? Okay, great, great. 0 0.44. 0 0.44. Yeah, that's, that's, that's tight. That is, that, that is amazing. That is amazing. Uh, so 0 0.44 air change is uh, very, that's, that beats uh, the uh, uh, European Passive House standard. 0 0.36. 0 <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. Jeez. Yeah, <laughs> and they, man, oh man, somebody get me a drink. So, and then there's a, the, but then, but then, you know, as a building science, at some point, you want to know, well, these are artificial induced pressures. It's not always 40 kilometers of wind out there or 25 kilometers of wind out there. What's the natural air leakage rate on my house when it's at ambient conditions on a cold day? Well, it turns out for Ontario, the, the lads at Lawrence Berkeley Labs have figured out they've got a little formula that helps you convert an ACH50 into an ACH natural, okay? That's what the N8N means in natural, okay? So next is understanding uh, test results. So as you know, the larger your building gets, the volume increases dramatically, but the skin surface area, uh, you know, it, the, 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 there's, a, there's a diversion there in terms of volume to surface area. And you, so the volume to surface area changes and, and it goes up for smaller volumes. So for instance, at one air change per hour, like think of your really airtight test at 0.44 air changes per hour. Let's say it's just one air change per hour as opposed to five air changes per hour. That means that you're getting, uh, if this was one cubic foot, uh, if it was one air change per hour, you would have one cubic foot leaving, uh, uh, well, 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 we'll leave it at one, one cubic foot as, as a unit, as opposed to 27 uh, 27 CFM, say, uh, for the larger building, okay? So what this means is that if we're using an ACH uh, as a test metric for small buildings, then it gets really tough to build uh, a really tight uh, building using the same metric here. So it, 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 it penalizes the small, uh, the small house. So houses versus buildings. Uh, you can see there's a big difference here. We got a little house, big building. For typically for buildings, we'd use like a, a CFM 75 per cubic foot of skin surface area. So the skin surface area, how do we measure that? Does anyone got an idea? A cube has four sides, or including you're including six. Five. Thank you. Five. 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 Yes. It's sorry. I, 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 I'm just going on autopilot here. Yes, yes, a cube does have six sides. <laughs> See, Mario County would have caught that as well. So, and uh, that, that, that's a surface area. What I meant was how many can we see here? No. Uh, so, but, so CFM 75 per square foot. So, so we normalize the, the data, not according to the volume, but uh, according to the skin surface area, okay, for commercial buildings. Small buildings will use an ACH 50 and air changes per hour at 50 pascals. So skin surface area in this building, really simple to calculate, okay? Whoa. What do you do here? So this is, this is where Sherman says, can you please just send me the AutoCAD file? I, I don't want to calculate it by hand anymore. Uh, equivalent leakage area, equivalent leakage area is uh, another thing, you know, to answer that, we got to go all the way back to War of 1812. And <laughs> it's a USA versus Canada thing. And the nomenclature changes a little bit. So LBL, Lawrence Berkeley Labs, have an ELA, and the Canadians have the EQLA. You know, a small distinction. The Q makes the distinction. You know, we got to be Canadian. Uh, so the USA, uh, the hole that they calculated in the lab has a 
uh, rounded edge. Whereas uh, in Canada, in the test lab, they had a nice square edge, okay? So it makes a difference in terms of turbulence. And then there's the pressure. So four pascals versus 10, okay? Small, subtle differences, but if somebody's quoting you in ELA, you wanna make sure that it's not the American. Stay, stay true to your colors. And remember what team you're on. Correlation coefficient, the R squared, so 99, uh, 0.99 or better for an acceptable test. If it's any less than 0.99, uh, it's not a good test, you have to repeat. And that means that your data has to fall on that trend line, uh, the nice orange uh, trend line there, all right? The exponent n is a great uh, feature of this uh, uh, whole um, calculation. n gives you clues about what kind of holes we have in our building envelope. It's a very powerful diagnostic tool. Uh, for an acceptable test, n uh, will vary from 0.5 to 0.1. Okay, if it's out of those bounds, it's not a good test, typically. Maybe it was too windy, it skewed your, your, uh, your, 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 uh, your test too much. So 0.5, at the lower end of the scale, indicates that the holes are few, but they're large, okay? Left a window open. Left a window open. One does not happen. Uh, whereas one is the polar opposite, okay? Uh, one is, means that you have many small holes or cracks. And remember, the ELA, what the ELA, the equivalent leakage area is, is if we take all of those holes, all the area of all those holes, and we squish it all into one puzzle, and we say, okay, that's like a 10 by 10 hole. You know, the ELAs we're getting now is, I think that, you know, everyone back there is uh, in the Century Club. We're under 100 square centimeters, right, in your ELAs. I think, Ed, uh, Chris, you guys have gotten under 100 uh, square centimeters, which is uh, fantastic. Uh, sorry, Andrew. Sorry. That was interchangeable, you know. So, so, you know, so basically, if you, if you test a house and you got 0.5, you're like, all right, guys, we got five minutes to find the big leak. It won't take long. You tape it up and you're gone to the pub. But if it's a one, it's going to be a slog trying to get the, uh, the air leakage down. So let's say, per chance, I had a dozen fans. What is the maximum size of building that I could test? Uh, well, that depends on how crappy the building is. <laughs> so if, it's a, if we're using ASHRAE 90.1, they have three categories, airtight, average, and leaky. If it's a really leaky building, guess what? You need a lot more fans. You need to set up a lot more. You need to schlep a lot more gear, set up test equipment everywhere. But if it's an airtight building, look at that. You can test a building up to 55,000 square meters of surface area. That includes the, all four sides plus the top and bottom. That's what I meant last time. Uh, <laughs> Uh, don't forget the top and bottom. Six sides. Six, six sides, okay? <laughs> so, yeah, but if it's really leaky, you can see, or I'm not going to test a lot of buildings. We're going to have to go to Ryerson University. We're going to have to go to Humber College, borrow their equipment, and uh, test, test, test. So, yeah, remember it includes the slab. So the evolution of ventilation system demands air tightness. Uh, building codes are moving. Uh, away from suck-only systems, as Joe Stieber calls them, which is exhaust only. And they're moving towards balanced ventilation systems. Um, air tightness brings greater value to heat recovery ventilation systems, right? If you've got an airtight building, boy, your HRV really earns its keep. Well, like, why? Who would, who would put an HRV in a house that leaks seven air changes an hour? Come on. You know, uh, I mean, it's, it'd be like putting a Ferrari's engine in, I don't know, my dad's old Dodge Monaco from 1970, whatever. So, let's talk about benchmarks. There's a lot of different benchmarks out there. Uh, passive house. <coughs> So we talk about uh, ASHRAE 90.1, like I said, the leaky enclosure. So uh, from 0.3 to 0.6, the average enclosure in the orange here goes from 0.1 to 0.3, CFM 75 per square foot of skin surface area. And then it goes down, Washington State. You can see here, you know, it's, it's, it's a leaky enclosure, but the point is, is that they're actually testing. And I guarantee you that if, if people are testing buildings, uh, at least they're getting, some, they're getting something known. You test it, you know it, okay? As opposed to just, what, when Sherwood and I go testing tra uh, track-built houses, it, the air leakage is all over the place. The, 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 the list of fixes are as long as your arm, okay? Uh, U.S. Army Corps of Engineer, every military building built in the United States, the, US, the United States Army has been serious about energy efficiency for a long time. They see climate change as a realistic threat. So go figure, the US, US Army understands that stockpiling energy is important and they want to make it, they want to stretch it as long as they can. 
Latvia, Slovenia, those are big populous countries, right? Where's Canada on this map? So Germany, Fias, Scotland, mighty Scotland, Passive House Europe, boy, you know, uh, I, it just makes me think, where is Canada? But we're not there, we're not there yet. So why bother with air tightness? Why care about air leakage? In most new production homes, like I was saying, you know, uh, that Sherman and I would leak, uh, t test, the air leakage could be the single greatest heat loss factor in the whole building envelope. In higher value assemblies, air leakage could be a durability and, uh, and a, a health liability in terms of moisture migrating into the envelope, condensing in the envelope, and year over year building up and degrading. Building codes, and, and you know, we do a lot of diagnostics. I can show, you know, I've got horror shows. That's, that's, that's how I make my money with horror shows of pictures of attics, you know, uh, that uh, are moldy and falling apart. The building code uh, in SB 12, uh, allows you to actually claim, if you're going to test the air tightness of your building, allows you to maybe squeak under that 40% window to wall ratio because you, you're going to test it and it's gonna be more airtight. So you can can't claim that, that credit from 0.25 down to one air change uh, towards the benefit, towards the, uh, the energy balance uh, of your uh, building. So it makes sense to use that. You're doing QA on your own building. Can, the CSA uh, you know, so heat loss, heat gain uh, uh, formula now uh, credits measured air leakage as well. So the next code 2017, we don't know. I, you know, I, I haven't heard anything about what, uh, what's going to be coming out. So here's some stats. Let's, let's talk stats. So we've got our three, our ASHRAE 90.1 leaky enclosure, average enclosure, tight enclosure. And so the uh, building we tested in London, Ontario, the... Um, uh, the uh, uh, lead Platinum building, uh, you know, just over 0.1. Center for Urban Ecology, and that is uh, uh, just north of the city here at uh, Humber College. Uh, lead Gold. Uh, the OAA building, not a lead building, I, I, I understand. But, you know, again, we didn't test this one, but, you know, again, a very good air leakage, uh, you know, pretty airtight in, you know, an average enclosure. Uh, but the brickworks, that was a surprise. I will say that the brickworks was a renovation of an existing building, right? The, the big atrium is a big brick building. But I mean, you know, you don't want this. You don't want this for your building. Like, we, you know, don't put your name on it till you know, you've, you, you've tested it. And either way, it's good news. <laughs> either way, it's good news. If you do a test, there is no wrong answer, okay? Especially if it's pre-drywall, okay? The, the news is good either way. It's, not, it's a no-risk proposition, okay, guys? That's what I want to say, all right? Thank you. Uh, there's lots of beer. And... <laughs>